open your Bibles to the book of 1 Peter, 1 Peter chapter number 1, 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1. 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 1. And the Bible says, Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Kung Tagalogin natin ang Bible, ang sabi ng Bible, akong si Pedro ay apostol ni Heso Kristo sa mga hinirang ng Diyos na pansamantalang uh, nakikipamayan sa, at nakakalat sa Ponto, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, at Bithynia. <clears throat> Bithynia. Now, ginagamit ng Diyos si Pedro upang palakasin niya ang kanyang mga kapatiran. Kung natatandaan ninyo, iniwan natin si Peter, yung pag-aaral natin kay Peter sa Luke chapter number 22. Go over to Luke chapter 22. If you remember last Sunday, we left off in Luke chapter 22, speaking of Peter. We, we, re, we studied about the life of Peter, did a little bit of survey of who is the apostle Peter. And we found in Luke chapter number 22, And verse number 31 and 32, Luke chapter 22, verse 31, we found that Jesus had a request, a special request for Peter. Uh, look at Luke 21, verse 31. I'm sorry, Luke chapter 22, verse number 31. Uh, and the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you that he may sift you as wheat. Verse 32, but I have prayed for thee. Oh, the intercessory ministry of Jesus Christ. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. And this is what we find in his epistle. His letter of First Peter is really an epistle that strengthens the brethren. Pinapalakas niya yung kanyang mga kapatiran. Now, ginamit siya ng Panginoon. Uh, hindi niya namalayan, nagagamitin siya ng Panginoon sa mamaya sa kanyang buhay uh, upang bigyan sila ng lakas ng loob yung mga kapatiran. Uh, pati na rin ho tayo ay uh, may benefits tayo dahil sa liham ni, ni Peter sa mga kapatiran. Kasama ho tayo doon. And we're included in that request. Jesus said, strengthen your brethren. Peter is strengthening us as Christians. Peter is strengthening us, part of the New Testament. Uh, we find his first Peter, second Peter. And these are epistles of hope, epistles that teach us something about suffering and how to suffer as a Christian and how to submit ourselves unto the Lord and see how the Lord would do a mighty deed in our midst. So, sa ngayon, ipagpapatuloy natin yung pag-aaral ng background ni first, ng first Peter upo, upang sumulong tayo sa pag-aaral nitong liham ng pag-asa. And so now we're going to study a little bit more, this time not about Peter, but about first Peter, the letter, so that we move forward in our, in our study of the book of first Peter, or the letter of hope, first Peter. So, uh, una sa lahat, first of all, let's look at who is the receiver of the letter. Who received this letter? Well, uh, sa Bible, ang mga tagapagtanggap ay yung mga strangers scattered throughout Asia Minor, basically. It's to the strangers scattered. Look at verse number one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. And again, these regions are found in a map. And I happen to have a Bible map. Kung meron tayong notebook, sana, nandun, nandun ito sa notebook ninyo. Uh, pero eto na lang, I will, I, will, I will have you look at it. Okay? This is the map of Asia Minor. So you see Asia Asia, Bithynia, Pontus, all right, and Cappadocia, 
And so Bithynia, ayan. So ito yung, this is Israel right here. Ito yung Israel. O, oh, nandiyan ang Israel. Okay? Uh, umakyat ka dyan. So ngayon, this is modern day Turkey. Now, put this slip over here. So you can see, ayan, sa pula, yung pulang lettering, Turkey. So ito yung buong country ng Turkey. Ito yung uh, Israel. Okay? So kung may modern map ka, tingnan mo na lang yung modern day Turkey uh, and all these regions, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia are located in Asia Minor or modern day Turkey. And of course, uh, God had churches, New Testament, Baptist, Biblical churches all over Asia Minor. And most likely because of the fruit of Peter's ministry. Interestingly enough, some of them may have been from Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. Uh, look, up the, look up the locations and see if you can find some of Asia Minor geographic locations in Acts chapter 2. I'm sure you'll find some. And, but at the same time, you remember, uh, see, Paul. Remember when Paul uh, took Silas and Timothy and Luke and launched into his second missionary journey heading towards Philippi. He wanted to preach in Asia Minor. He wanted to go to Bithynia. But what happened? The Holy Spirit told him, no, don't go there. Why? Uh, most likely because that was Peter's <laughs> uh, mission field. And so that's why uh, God wants his churches to spread out. And so uh, yung mga tagapagtanggap nitong liham ay yung mga strangers na scattered. So you see the word scattered there in verse number one, strangers scattered. Uh, yan yung diaspora, diaspora, uh, o yung ibig sabihin ng diaspora o scattered, mga kinalat no? sa mga geographic locations ng modernong Turkey, ng bansa ng Turkey noong kapanahonan ni Peter uh, at saka ni Paul. So uh, sila ay mga malamang mga Jewish churches, Jewish Christian churches, malamang, maraming mga Hudyo doon. At alam mo naman ang ugali ni Peter, pati na rin si Paul, saan man sila pumunta, inuuna muna nila ang pag-evangelize ng mga Hudyo. And so, uh, God established uh, through the persecution, God scattered the churches in Jerusalem and scattered them all over the, the Asia Minor. And when, when a church scatters and Christians scatters, it's not unusual for Christians to plant churches and to start churches. Kaya napaka-importante na uh, magkaroon ng mga churches. Bawat barangay dapat may church, may New Testament, Biblical, Baptist church sa bawat barangay. Yun ang gusto ng Panginoon. At ang daming mga barangay dito sa tagig, 28 na barangay. And therefore, kailangan natin 28 na mga Biblical Baptist churches uh, upang uh, magampanan natin ang layunin ng Diyos sa kapanahonan natin ngayon. Now, sila ay mga church members. Now, these are not just individual Christians. These are church members. I want you to see that. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. Go over to 1 Peter chapter 5. Look at what what um, Peter was addressing in chapter five, uh, chapter five, and verse number one. Think no more. Chapter five, verse number one. The elders which are among you. Oh, the elders which are among you. Who are the elders? Yan yung bishop. Yan yung pastor. Yan yung elder. Yan yung presbyter. Magkaparehas hulahat yan. That's the pastor, the elder, the bishop, the overseer, the, the presbyter, the, the uh, pastor, uh, the, the one who oversees the, a local New Testament biblical church. That's an elder. So Peter was addressing the elders of the churches in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, and all these places. They're, these are not just individually scattered Christians, remember. That's an, that's an evangelical mindset. 
We need a biblical mindset. And the biblical mindset is, 1 Peter is written to churches. New Testament biblical churches. And uh, let's see. Think more on verse number two. Look at verse number two. Feed the flock of God. Oh, the flock of God. Flock uh, is a picture of the New Testament church. Okay, so yan yung mga churches. Don't forget, this letter is written to the churches. God's kingdom program is manifested and focused today on the churches. So let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 1. Now, uh, so not only are they scattered, the Bible says, hindi lang sila mga kinalat, no? Sila rin ay mga strangers. Look at verse number 1. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the strangers scattered. The strangers. Whoa, what a strange word to call the churches and the Christians there strangers. Well, that's because the word strangers come from the word that can also mean pilgrim. To the pilgrims who are scattered throughout uh, Pontus and Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Yung palang strangers, pwede palang sabihin pilgrim. All right? Ano yung pilgrim sa Tagalog? Manlalakbay, peregrino, okay? Manlalakbay. And, uh, and what, an ex what a powerful picture of what Christians ought to be in a world that's full of sin, in a world that's full of darkness. We Christians ought to be pilgrims. We're not comfortable here on earth. We're not to make this earth our heaven. I'm so glad this is not our heaven. I'm so thankful that I have a heavenly home that when I, when I die because of Jesus Christ, I have a home in heaven. And Or if Jesus decides to come back and rapture the believers, oh, oh he's going to take us to his father's house. And so this is not our heaven. This is not eternal life. This is nothing. This is a world that's full of darkness, that's full of sin. This world is full of confusion. It's full of fear. It's full of sadness. It's full of viruses. It's full of sickness and disease and sin. Oh, this is not our heaven. So Christian, don't be comfortable. Wag tayong, wag natin isipin na ito ang langit natin bilang kristyano. No, tayo po ay stranghero, tayo ay manlalakbay, at balang araw, uuwi ho tayo sa tunay nating tahanan kung kilala mo ang Panginoong Heso Kristo sa iyong buhay. Meron kang tahanan sa langit, kasama ng Ama, kapiling ng Panginoon magpakailanman. Either sa pamamagitan ng kamatayan o sa pamamagitan ng rapture ang napag-aaralan natin this Wednesday. Anyway, uh, so sila ay um, strangers, sila ay scattered, sila ay mga iglesia, uh, mga simbahan, at sila ay mga hudyo at mga hintil. So mix sila, no? Merong mga hudyo sa church, merong mga hintil sa church. Pero uh, sino yung mga hintil? Lahat ng hindi hudyo, yun ang mga hintil. And so, Uh, this church, these churches in Asia Minor are full of Jews, most likely, because of the word diaspora. But there's also Gentile believers within that church as well. So it's a mixed church. There's Jews and Gentiles. And just like our church, there's Filipinos, there's American, and uh, there's all different kinds of people in the church. And it really doesn't matter if you're American or Filipino. In the church, that doesn't matter. What really matters is we know the Lord Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, and we follow him, whether you're black, white, or brown, uh, whether you're rich or poor. Uh, amen. It has nothing to do with our economy, our race, our, our lineage. Uh, everything is equal in Jesus Christ, even the gender, the Bible says. And there's neither male nor female in Christ, in the church. And so... Uh, what a blessing it is to be a part of the local New Testament uh, biblical Baptist church. Now, so, yung mga tagapagtanggap, 
ng First Peter ay mga simbahan. So the recipients of this letter are those strangers scattered throughout Asia Minor. Those are the churches of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ that Peter was apparently instrumental in church planting, uh, apparently. Now, uh, saan at kailan niya sinulat ang liham na ito? Now, let's look at another thing here. Where did he write this letter from and when did he write this letter? So every time we study a new book, these are the kind of things that we need to learn about. These are the kind of things that we study so that when we look at this Bible, we have a good understanding of where we are, who, who we're talking to, and what this book is about. So where, where did Peter write this book? Go over to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 13. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number 13. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 13. Peter said this, To the church that is at Babylon. To the church that is at Babylon. Elected together with you, saluteth you, and so doth Marcus my son. Oh, okay, so Peter was in Babylon with Mark, his son. Now, when it says his son, it's not speaking that that was his child. That means he won John Mark to the Lord. Some way, somehow, John came to know the Lord Jesus Christ as his Savior through the ministry of Peter. And he is his spiritual son in the faith. And uh, he wrote this letter along with Silvanus, his secretary, uh, while he was ministering or planting a church in Babylon. Now, where is Babylon in the, in the New Testament? Well, this is, this is the Babylon that we find in Mesopotamia. You know, you remember the Euphrates River? Okay, I, I think I have my geography here. I could look for Babylon. At doon, nandoon si Peter. Na, nabuhay siya sa... Na, nag-travel siya doon at nag-start sigurado siya ng mga churches doon. All right? And here it is. <clears throat> this is Babylon here. So you can see, if I can focus my camera here. Ayan, yun yung Babylon. Yeah, Babylon. Ito ngayon yung tinatawag na modern day Iraq. So Iraq. So even Peter was able to get there and minister there. And uh, some people say Babylon is Rome, but I don't believe that to be so because the Bible says it literally, Babylon. I don't believe there's anything secret or mysterious about it, even if they say that it's a code word and all that kind of stuff. I don't buy into that. I, I think when the Bible says Babylon, it means Babylon, okay? And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong about starting churches in Iraq. We, they need churches, especially today. <laughs> well. They're a closed country, and uh, boy, uh, would it be a blessing to start churches uh, in places that really need uh, churches, but we need churches here too. We need churches in 28 districts of Tagig, and uh, wouldn't that be a great goal to establish 28 local New Testament Bible-believing Baptist churches in Tagig, and uh, well, that's our task. That's what God wants. So, we know that he wrote it in Babylon. When did he write it? Well, we have good reason to think that he wrote it between uh, between uh, Nero, around Nero's, uh, when Nero was the emperor of Rome. Sa kapanahonan ni Emperor Nero, mga 64 AD, o matapos yung 64 AD. Tandaan ninyo, si Apostol uh, Pablo, pinugutan ng ulo ni Nero, Mga 64 AD. Remember, Nero was the emperor uh, that com that commanded Paul's head to be cut off, for Paul to be beheaded. And so Peter served. Imagine that Peter served and ministered to the Christian churches that were being persecuted by Rome by Nero. Uh, I mean, look, think about. Our church today, are we being persecuted like that? Not at all. Not at all. Now, I do believe there are churches that are being persecuted today. 
We just don't read about them because they're underground churches. And sure, there are churches in the USA today that cannot assemble because there is some punk mayor or some punk uh, uh, official who, who are totally opposed and atheist. And so they use their political leverage to stop the assembling of churches. And that's unbiblical. And uh, I pray that the First Amendment rights uh, would come would come through, and that um, they'd be uh, they'd be smacked down by the First Amendment rights. But anyway, <clears throat> so ang mga Kristiano ay nakaranas ng matinding pagsubok uh, dahil sa kanilang pananampalataya. Biro mo sa Roma, sabi ng Roma, ng Emperor ng Roma, ako ang sambahan ninyo bilang Panginoon. Pero sa Kristiano, wala tayong Panginoon maliban lang kay Jesus Christ. Siya ang ating Panginoon. Hindi tayo lumuluhod sa mga senador, congressman, mayor, kahit na sino yan, president, prime minister, uh, unggoy, uh, kahit na ano yan, anong klaseng tao yan, hindi tayo uh, luluhod sa tao kasi hindi natin sinasamba ang tao. Ang tangi nating sinasamba, kinikilala bilang ating Panginoon ay ang Panginoong Heso Kristo. But the, the, the churches face severe persecution. Now, how do you encourage them? Well, that was Peter's job. Peter's task to encourage the churches. He wrote them two letters. And we get to study that letter. We get to look into this. So if you're going through a hard time, oh, First Peter is a good book to study and to read and to remember and to get, gain spiritual strength for you. Para pagdating ng pagsubok, alam mo na tapat, may grasya ang Diyos na tapat para sa pagsubok na darating sa'yo. Oh, look look into the book of 1 Peter. So, uh, um, hindi, lang, hindi lang gobyerno ang uh, kaaway ng mga Kristiyano noon. Pati na rin yung mga mamamayan ng Roma. Uh, look at 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 12. Well, not only was the government persecuting the churches, look at uh, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 12, but even other citizens were lying about Christians, and they were being persecuted by liars. Look over in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 12. But these are as natural brute beasts made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not. See, they speak evil of the things they understand not. It's not unusual for the Christians to be slandered, to be lied about, to be evil spoken of. Kaya pag merong nagsasabi ng mali, ng kasinungalingan patungkol sa atin bilang Kristiyano, sanay na ho tayo. Sanay na ho tayo doon. Huwag kang mabugabog, huwag kang Huwag kang mag-alala sa mga sinasabi ng ma mga, ma mga masasamang tao. Kasi dapat ayusin mo lang yung lakad mo bilang kristyano. Para kapag may sinabi silang mali, alam naman ng tao kung sino talaga ang matino at sino ang, ang nagsasabi ng katotohanan. Basta huwag kang, uh, kang mag-backslide at sumama sa mali. Alright? <clears throat> sa sa kasinungalingan. Uh, hindi niya sinulat ito para sabihin sa mga Kristiyano na alisin ng Diyos ang kanilang mga pagsubok. Bagkos sila ay patitibayan ng Panginoon sa kalagitnaan ng kanilang mga pagsubok. You know, Peter did not write this letter telling the churches and telling the Christians that uh, God is going to remove the trial and temptation. No. God's not going to remove the trial and temptation, but God will be with the Christian in the midst of their trial, in the midst of their tribulation. God will bring them through. God will give them grace to meet the testings and the trials. So really, our testings and trials are measured, measured by the loving God. God already knows how much we can handle and what we can take, and He doesn't give us more than we can handle. God measures our testings and trials. We need to trust in Him. We need to trust in Him. So, saan at kailan niya sinulat ito? Sa kalagitnaan ng uh, pinakamatinding 
persecution ni Emperor Nero. Alright? Now, ano ang mga layunin kung bakit niya sinulat ang 1 Peter? Well, meron tayong mga limang layunin. There's about five reasons why Peter wrote this letter. And I want us to look at it real quick. Uh, first of all, uh, pinapaliwanag ni Pedro ang layunin ng Diyos sa kaugnayan ng kaligtasan at ng pagsubok. Okay? Merong kaugnayan ang kaligtasan at pagsubok. And Peter wants to explain. Here's the first reason why he wrote it. He wants to explain the relationship between salvation and suffering. Salvation and suffering. And that's what we'll see in this letter. Number two, inihikayat niya ang mga tumatanggap ng kanyang liham, yung kanyang mga mambabasa, na sila ay mabuhay ng may kabanalan, pag-ibig, paglago, at manatili ang kanilang testimony para sa Panginoon. Look at 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 13. Here's another reason why Peter wrote this letter. 1 Peter 1, 13. Yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up, to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. So, Peter wanted to stir up the church. Maybe they were maybe they were backslidden. Maybe they were slumbering. Maybe they were getting comfortable. I don't think they were comfortable in persecution. Maybe they were forgetting. Maybe they weren't remembering. And so Peter stirred them up to, to get them activated. Okay? Uh, that's a purpose, one of the purposes. Third, dapat ang mga Kristiyano ay sumunod sa mga otoridad, sa mga may otoridad. Now, Peter, another reason why Peter wrote this is to teach the churches to follow authority. To teach the churches to follow God-ordained authority. Now, this is unique, okay? Uh, look at uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13. 1 Peter chapter 2. And verse 13, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors, as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Now remember, was Peter always submissive to the authorities? No. You look at Acts chapter number 4. Uh, he would say, we would rather obey God than man. So when are we supposed to obey the authority? When the authority is in line with the word of God. But when the authority is no longer in line with the word of God, uh, Peter would say, we would rather obey God than man. But I think a lot of Christians have an authority problem. We think that we know more. We think that we know better. And so it's easy for a Christian to say, oh, nobody's going to tell me what to do. Well, Peter said, wait a minute. Uh, submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. And so there's room to obey when our, our, our liberty and our freedoms are not being violated. And I don't believe this COVID situation is a violation of our our fundamental rights, okay? Now, uh, this is a public health problem, not a civil liberty problem. Now, it can become a civil liberty problem, especially when churches are not allowed to assemble in their cars in the parking lot. That's a different situation now. That's a civil liberty issue. But as far as congregating and not forming a group more than 10 for the sake of uh, not spreading the virus, that's a public health issue. And we ought, to, we ought to follow for public health reasons. Now, I believe that public health issue is going to change here soon. And Lord willing, we'll see a, a, a medical breakthrough and we'll get back to normal. And aren't you ready to have church again, all over again, and to enjoy the fellowship? Woo! I think we ought to have church uh, for a long hours, <laughs> you know, maybe a continued service from 11 to 3, you know, with food in between. Amen. Always with food. Uh, only rice, diba? I see Atilat is watching us. Only rice. 
Ano ba yan? Nauwi ulit, ulit tayo sa pagkain. All right, anyway. Uh, so, he wants to encourage the churches to follow authority. And we believe in that too. Now, may mga warning ito sa... Uh, may mga warning din ang letter ng First Peter patungkol sa mga... Uh, Pamamaraan ni Satanas. There's also a warning here concerning this, the scheme and the tactic of Satan. Look at 1 Peter chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse number um, 8. 1 Peter, Peter chapter 5 verse number 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. So one of the reasons why Peter would write this letter is to warn the churches about how the devil wants to come in and destroy your life. So we have that to look forward to when we get there. And the last reason... And I'm sure there's more than five reasons for this letter, but the, these are the five that I, I found on the outline. Uh, 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 yung pinakalipang lima, syempre nais din niyang magbigay ng bati sa mga simbahan na nakakalat sa Asia Minor. And uh, Paul, P Peter wanted to send his greetings, greetings to the churches scattered abroad. And so that's why he would say this, Verse 14, greet ye one another <laughs> with a kiss of charity, okay? Now, we don't practice kisses of charity, okay? That's not for us today. That's a cultural way of greeting. That's how they greeted back, <laughs> back in their day and in Babylon, okay? <laughs> uh, we're not in Babylon, amen. <laughs> so we greet one another with, uh, 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 now, of course, handshakes are, are not good anymore, right? That's what they say. Uh, we greet one another with a greeting in the name of the Lord with a nice smile and uh, a warm smile. But if you have a face mask, the smile is covered. Uh, oh, my. <laughs> so we have to find a new way to greet one another. Greet one another with a holy text, <laughs> okay, or a holy message or something. I don't know. Post it. Uh, anyway, but, uh, but Peter wanted to greet the churches. He wanted to see how the churches were doing. He, want, he was concerned for the churches. And so we have to be concerned one for another in the Lord. Kaya dapat uh, ganun din tayo. Now, ang key word, the key word in the epistle of First and Second Peter, actually First Peter, the key word here is suffering. Suffering. The key word is suffering. 16 times binanggit yung word suffering. So kung talagang meron kang suffering, maganda basahin ang First Peter. At uh, si Jesus Christ ay binanggit na nagsasuffer siya. Anim na beses sa liham na ito. At uh, si Kristo ay ating example. Kung paano siya naghirap at dumaan sa paghihirap, Kristiyano, gayahin natin ang Panginoong Iso Kristo sa ating mga pagsubok, sa ating mga paghihirap. Buhatin mo ang iyong krus at uh, ibigay mo sa Panginoon ang, ang mga bagay na yan at um, maging kagaya natin ang Panginoon. Gumaya tayo sa Panginoon sa oras ng ating mga pagsubok. And, and God will bless us for that. Now, ang liham na ito, maraming mga commands. There's a lot of commands. Naalala ba ninyo yung word command na pinag natin? What, do you remember the word for command in the, in the New Testament that I taught you about in the book of Jude? Imperative. <laughs> Imperatives. The command words, marami pong mga command words sa epistle na ito. And remember, they are commands because they are not suggestions, they are not optional. This is something you ought to be doing as a Christian, okay? And so I can't wait to look at all the imperatives of the book of 1 Peter and this loaded with imperatives. This book is also loaded with doctrine. It's loaded with doctrine. There's the doctrine of Christ. There's the doctrine of the Trinity. There's the doctrine of the Spirit. There's the doctrine of the second coming of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of doctrine. And I want to look at all the doctrines we can find in 1 Peter. There's the doctrine of salvation. There's the doctrine of sanctification. There's the doctrine of submission. 
There's the doctrine of uh, the second coming. There's ecclesiology, the doctrine of the churches and church in this letter. Oh, this letter is full of doctrine. And I love Bible doctrine. And we're going to look at that as we study this book. So, kung bibigyan natin ang outline, ang book of First Peter. If you want an outline, well, I'll give you this outline here. And then I'll put it in, I put it in our notes, okay? From chapter 1, from verse 3 to 12, that's salvation. Chapter 1, verses, from chapter 1, verse 3 to 12, salvation. From chapter 1, 13 to chapter 2, verse 10, that's sanctification. And then from chapter 2, 11 to chapter 3, verse 12, that's submission. So there's salvation, sanctification, submission. And then chapter 3, verse 13 to chapter 4, verse 19, that is suffering. Suffering, salvation, sanctification, submission, and suffering. And then in chapter 5, there's shepherding for the pastors, shepherding and sobering messages, sobering messages, and then of course the conclusion. So there is a good order in the outline of the book of First Peter. It talks about salvation, then sanctification, then submission, and then suffering, and then shepherding and sobering messages. So all this we find in the amazing five chapters of First Peter. I'm excited to get into this book because there will be a lot of encouragements to strengthen the brethren from 1 Peter. Would you bow your head and close your eyes? And let's ask the Lord to bless them. Pagpatuloy natin ang pag-aaral next Sunday. Pasok na tayo sa verse number 2. At pag-usapan natin ang doctrine of salvation. All right? Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you, God, for the opportunity we have to look into the word of God to look at the letter of First Peter and how it strengthens the brethren. Oh Lord, thank you. We need to be strengthened. We need the grace and the mercy and the power and the peace that comes from you uh, to enable us to be strengthened in the midst of suffering, Lord. And even if our suffering is not, nothing compared to how the churches in Asia Minor and the early first century churches really suffered. And Father, we're really really softer than them. But Father, we pray your grace be upon us, Lord. Help us to get through this uh, quarantine phase, Lord. Help us to see the curve happen sooner. Help us to find the cure uh, and help us, Lord, to find the testings and the treatments necessary uh, to have a, an orderly society restored, Father. And uh, we pray uh, that our churches can assemble once again and enjoy the fellowship of the believers, Lord, and the, and the disciples that have been baptized. Be assembled and uh, uh, more discipleship to take place and more uh, souls to be saved and lives to be changed for your honor and glory. Now, habang nakayo ko ang ulo, nakapikit ang mata, and as Marsh is playing, I want to ask you a question. When you think about suffering, when you think about what you're going through in the midst of suffering. We need to remember the Lord. We need to remember the words of God. And uh, you need to promise, you need to make a promise that you will not forget the Lord. Call upon Him. Call upon Him at night. Call upon Him in the midnight. Call upon Him early in the morning. But commit to memory the goodness of God the greatness of God. If he saved you, you have heaven to look forward to, whether it's by death or the rapture. Don't be afraid of a virus. Don't be afraid of the statistics. Uh, if you're not saved, get saved. Get to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can have peace in your heart. Peace. Let the peace of Christ dwell in you, rule in you. Let God do a work in your life. And uh, uh, if there's great suffering coming upon us, remember, 
there's a greater God and greater grace that God will give us to face our sufferings. We just need to remember him. Would you bow and pray and let's ask the Lord to bless them. Father in heaven, Lord, salamat dakilang Diyos sa grasya na binibigay niyo po sa amin araw-araw. Panginoon, i-bless niyo po ng mga panustos sa mga pangangailangan ng kapatiran. Lord, yung mga nakikinig, Panginoon, na matuklasan nila ang pagpapala ng tunay na pag-aaral ng salita ng Diyos upang maging gabay at liwanag sa aming madilim na mundo at magulo na mundo. Salamat sa kapayapaan na binibigay niyo po sa amin. Tulungan niyo po si Sister Lorilyn sa kanyang uh, kaba, Lord, sa kanyang anxiety. Bigyan niyo po siya ng lakas at panusto sa kanyang mga pangangailangan. Gayon din, Lord, yung mga request na binanggit kanina, Lord, yung, mga, yung kapatid ni Ati Lot, Lord, sila, yung kuya at si Ati Lord sa kanilang pagtatrabaho, lakas, Panginoon, para sa kanila. Kay Ati Gina, kay Risa, Panginoon, sa kanilang katawan, lalo na kay Ati Risa sa kanyang panganganak, lakas, Panginoon, at grasya at tulong. Lord, i-bless you po kami, hindi dahil sa amin, kundi alang-alang sa aming Panginoong Iso Kristo. Ito pong aming mga dalangin. Amen. And amen. Well, God bless you. I'm so glad that you listened. Thank you sa pakikinig ninyo. Uh, wag kalimutan, Wednesday, no? Pagpapatuloy natin ang pag-aaral ng Biblia at ang mga hinaharap ng mga kaganapan. At tatalakayin po natin yung tinatawag na rapture sabagat yan ang susunod sa, sa calendar ng Panginoon. Meron tayong mga study notes na pwede niyong makuha, i-email niyo na lang ako or di kaya ilagay niyo sa send message sa Facebook namin at may, may bibigay ko sa inyo ang notes, study notes na yan. Pati na rin yung study notes sa buong araw na ito, yung Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday afternoon, itong mga notes na ito, available po yan para sa inyo. Lagay niyo na lang po yan sa send message at gagawa tayo ng paraan para makakuha kayo ng study notes. Now don't forget, 7.30 Wednesday night. Huwag din kalimutan mga kapatid, mga kapatiran, pag may pangangailangan, paki-message uh, paki si Ate Marcia o ako o ilagay niyo sa Facebook natin at uh, gagawin natin ang paraan para makatulong sa inyo. At uh, don't forget uh, uh, the Bible study, 7.30 Wednesday night and wash your hands. Wash your hands. <laughs> God bless you. Happy Bambi. Uh, I see that. Salamat. You're welcome. God bless you.